You know, one thing I want to make clear, you know, growing pains, and I, can, I can surely tell you that they're real. Uh, you know, as, as Tazwell grows and Tazwell is growing, growing pains are the, are the hardest thing to, to address in, in local government, and, and they are real. A lot of people will use those terms very lightly. But I'm absolutely happy as I can be to be part of it. And I don't care if it's negative or if it's positive. It just shows that we are a vibrant community that all care about where tomorrow's going and the interest and how we proceed. And, and God knows as manager, I've dropped the ball more than once. And, you know, for tonight's meeting, you know, this, this thing happened. There was a lot of chatter about it for a number of months and reality took place in like a couple of weeks so I'll be the first to admit and will also take full responsibility and put that target right there for the lack of communication um, so I'm ready for that and believe me I've been getting it lately so I don't have Facebook but I don't have to have it I don't care what you put on Facebook or a text message or an email, I can assure you that before the day is over with, it's coming across my phone. So I can put my phone down and it just, I can put it on vibrate and it'll go across the table all day long. And when I get home and there's no nothing on television, I'll watch and read, read all the posts. And so again, uh, short from saying that, that we tried our best in the time that we had uh, to communicate, we dropped that ball. And like I said, I'll take full responsibility for that. So, what I want to do tonight is go over some of the information that's out there. I want to be sure that, you know, if it's not already on there, I'm sure most everybody, maybe not everybody, has seen that contract that we drafted up. And if you haven't seen it, I'm going to put it on Facebook and do we have Tweaker yet, Twitter yet? We don't have any Twitter. I'll put it anywhere out there. It's open to the public. You, I'll you want Tweaker. <laughs> we, we will put it out there for, um, for everybody to see. We have nothing to hide. The second thing I want to tell you is that that, that contract was never put together for back of the draft. All right, it was never put together for back of the dragon. The state of Virginia legislatively gives us the abilities and the powers, again, legislatively to utilize the town council, the governed body, including the IDA, to transfer properties when we can. So, or when we feel like we need to for the best interest of the community. So, the IDA owns the bowling alley or will own the bowling alley. The IDA owned the theater. The IDA owns the lot where the hotel may be one day. Um, the IDA owns Rainey's, the car lot. So the IDA is there for a very, very important reason. And what it does is the town council who is the governing body does not have the ability to look at an individual and say, we know you're bringing something good to town. We know that you want to do something good for the community, but we, they cannot donate that property. It has to be done through an through industrial development authority or an IEDA. So a couple of things, those of you that were here in September, the council voted to transfer ownership of the Little League fields to the IEDA. They also voted to support the IEDA in making that transfer of ownership to Back of the Dragon. None of those have taken place, place yet. Um, Brad has not drafted that up. The transfer hadn't taken place yet. The town of Tazel, the taxpayers still own the field. And there's a long ways to go. 
So I said that for a reason. I know, I know it sounds like I'm jumping around. But if you'll go back to where I said the contract was never done for that. If you go through and read that contract, that contract was done and created to show the community that we are still the same manager, still the same council that I've worked with since 2012. And we've never, ever turned our back on our little people. How many of you saw Spot, Spot, Spot Steele's post of that? Did y'all see where he came in first in the state for Mason there? How many of you want to Like three or four kids. But, incredible. So, but we've always been there, you know, whether it's donating or going to travel or wherever, you know, I can't, I, I would, I would, I would challenge you to think of a time where your group of little people, whether it's basketball, baseball, football, cheerleading has ever been to the town council and they didn't in some way support it. Well, they're the same council. They'll never hurt our, our youth. They'll never do it. So that contract was a snapshot in time. So six months from now or three months from now, if that contract has not moved like in the next couple of weeks, everybody knows that those dates are redundant. They no longer apply. All that's going to have to be reevaluated. There's also a section in there where it states, and I've got it up here, and I'll pull it up anytime anybody wants to look at it when they have questions, but it states that there's closing cost involved. Well, those closing costs, it doesn't matter when it is, will still apply regardless of when we close. So I've talked to I don't know, four or five different attorneys. <clears throat> and the four or five different attorneys I've talked to, some say, okay, Todd, we need to consider this. And I really appreciate that. Some of them say, you've got it. We see what you're doing. We understand it. If you were to give it to 10 different attorneys, I'll assure you, David, you'd get 10 different contracts. If you let 10 managers look at it, you're going to get 10 different responses back. So the idea is to keep in mind, again, I'll admit, we dropped the ball on communication. I'll take responsibility for that. It happened really quick. But the love for our youth in this community is second to none. And it'll stay that way. It's not going to change. So that contract is there to show the community, show the little bit, <coughs> that we've got your back and that's not going to change so um i know that there's a lot of questions about what's going down there so i'm going to try to hit a lot of them and then i'm going to let you raise your hand and we'll go through some questions and i'll do my best to try to answer those questions um the contract specifically states that before any closing takes place that we will know what's going to be done in that B2 district. So, Robin, if you'll pull up that B2, but um, we do that with every project. It's not just, it's not just back in the dragon. So anytime we have a, anybody go in a B district, it's got to go through the zoning process. So it goes to Chris Hurley and zoning. If it needs to, it goes before uh, our chairperson Susan and her committee and planning commission and they evaluate it and look at it and the reason they do it we want to be sure that it fits the B2 criteria so if the if this takes place the things that you see right there are possibilities in a B2 district and that's all over town that's zone B2 so you got retail stores, bakeries, dry cleaners, clothing apparel stores, auto, home, home appliance services, theaters, assembly halls, hotels, churches, library, hospitals. It's one of the most unrestricted zoning that we've got. It is a business zone. So if there is a request given to us, and I've heard, I've heard comments from Back of the Dragon from a parking lot to shelter chalets 
amphitheaters. We don't have a clue. I do not have any conceptual drawings. Uh, I've not been handed anything from Back of the Dragon. I just know that they have an interest to expand their business. And if they can expand their business and fall within the state and the town of code book, specifically zoning, and do that, and our kids get two new ball fields out of it, who, who doesn't want that? I mean, how could you not want that? So, um, and you know, I get, I get phone calls every year from, from different organizations, especially Little League. You know, you can stock trout down there when it rains hard enough. The lights are falling down. Um, there was a request put in here two or three years ago to replace those lights down there. We all know it's problems down there. We all know it's been problems down there. We all know that it's, that we need to put a lot of money in it. So again, if we can make something happen and it falls within that zoning of B2, uh, which we're legally bound. So if, in, in other words, if he comes in and says he wants to put an Applebee's right there, Applebee's fits there, or Bob Evans, it fits there, or, uh, you know, sh little shelters and uh, they fit there. They, they fit that zone in. So legally, we can't stop it. Um, now, if he comes in with something different, if Dr. Dragon comes in with something different that's outside of that B2 district, it's got to then go before the Planning Commission. And it could ultimately end up with the DZA, the Board of Zone and Appeals, especially if Chris denies that application. So there's a process, and it's going to be treated just as fairly as any other business that's established. The other thing I want to point out is I, the town council, and I'd like to say this town is supportive of Back of the Dragon. It's the only game we have in town. All of our businesses in town, on Main Street, all over town, feed off of what Back of the Dragon is doing. That's tourism. That's tourism. And there was a recent report put out by Shamara, and I know it's been challenged on Facebook too, but I've looked at it, and I can tell you that the numbers are spot on. They're spot on. So if you look at Free Valley going all the way back into Marion, and you look at the bottom end of Marion coming all the way back into Free Valley, and you know how to read that average daily traffic count, which is an average daily traffic count, and divided by 360, 365 days out of the year, that report is spot on. So, I just want to point that out. There, there, there's been a lot of, there's been a lot of, and we earned it, there's a lot of negativity out there. And, but we do support Back of the Dragon, but first and foremost, we support our, our children. Um, that economy that Back of the Dragon could bring to the community is priceless and all of the businesses on Main Street deserve that traffic, deserve to have that. So, two things, we support Back of the Dragon, and if you're here thinking that, that that's a demon that's gonna fly up and get you, it's not. Um, they put it in a fence out there. I think they're talking about putting a chain around it so it won't get after you, but it ain't gonna go anywhere. It's fair to say, um, and, and our little people, we will, we will fight tooth and nail to protect our young people. And uh, we met with some of the members of Little League before the contract was ever implemented. And we've come to, I'm not going to call it an agreement, but maybe a point where we can say, this will work. Can we do better? Maybe. Can we do better? I'd love to see the facilities if they ever do come to fruition built first built first before we ever make a transfer uh, that was not the agreement that we talked about it's not the agreement that back of the dragon has got 
doesn't mean that we can't go back to the table. So I'll answer any questions. I'll try to. If I don't have them, I'll find them and get back to you. But um, I know it's a lot of concern, a lot of questions out there. I don't have all the answers, nor does the panel cancel. But if you have any questions at all, just one at a time, please. Mr. Alton. First, let me say that I am absolutely in favor of our kids having two fields. They deserve a good playing field. And I'm not opposed to the development down there if it's done in a way that it safeguards the residential community that's there. But let's be honest here. The Little League field is not being sold so that the Little League can get new fields. The Little League is going to get alternative fields as a necessity because the field is being sold. And let's look at it. Looking at the contract as it is, what does it say? It says that back of the dragon before closing has to submit plans. No control over what those are. There's no safeguards on on the community. Are you asking? No. I'm, I'm getting to a question. Oh, okay. It's a long, long question, but I'm getting there. But am I not correct in saying that it is the development authority that has to find the new property? that has to pay for the new property, that has to build the new fields, and that it has to pay the new fields. And if that's the case, why not just commit to doing that for the Little League, whether the sale goes through or not? No, that's not accurate. It may be the way you read it, but I can assure you if we need to tweak it, we will. I can answer your question for you if you'd like, but again, it depends on how you're doing that contract and what your objectives are as to what you see. Well, we will make changes if necessary, but to answer your question, no, it's not accurate. Anyone can read it and see that's what it says. We need to make changes. We appreciate the comment. The dragon has no obligation to do any of those things, right? That is correct. You are correct saying the dragon doesn't. If the IDA does not raise the funds, Let's say the IDA sits down, which if I was them, I would heavily consider that. But let's say that they don't do anything. What does it say happens? Nothing. Nothing. It doesn't say anything. That's not it says point. nothing happens. It specifically that, says... That is not what it says. That is not what it says. It has a closing date of November 1 of this year. What has to happen for that to occur? A miracle. The back of the dragon has to submit the plans. No control over what they are, they just have to submit them. Right. Then there has to be an acknowledgement that these things happen. They don't have to happen, it just says there's going to be an acknowledgement. If the November 1 date has no meaning, as you say, then why does it talk about prorating the 2019 real estate tax? It might be it might be 20 we can rewrite it i get your point i hear you you're right i i, I agree i totally agree it's a snapshot of today it's a snapshot of what happens today if that contract is not signed for another year david you know as well as i do those numbers and dates do not apply and it does specifically say in there that these criteria must be met but and one of those criteria is that all the funds are raised before a transaction takes place. That's not what I read. I'm hearing you. I have a, I have a lot of other attorneys who say, it's, we'll tweak it. I, I get it. Keep in mind, the contract, the contract was put together to show Little League that even though this transaction is taking place, we've still got you back. We're not so going to let it happen. That, why, why not say it clearly? Well, I can put in there, we've got you back. Yeah. And that spin is our attorney's view of clear, but obviously it needs to be looked at. So we will do that. Well, what about the backs of the people who live there? I understand that. I'm here to answer questions. If okay. you've got any, let me know how I can. 
I'm not satisfied that the town can convey or transfer the property to the IDA. The town can't sell it without bidding it. But the trust deed clearly says that it is the town that sells it, not the IDA. The right. IDA is a separate entity. It has a separate board. Be that as it may, there's an opportunity, if you're going to sell it, to put restrictions that protect those of us who live there. What about, um, you know, for instance, how are you going to manage the alcohol that's going to be served? Well, we've got a Okay. Will there be open containers? Um, will it be unlimited drinking? How is that going to be enforced? Are firearms going to be prohibited? Um, this is a public place. The public right. is going to be coming there. That means any public, including biker gangs if they want to. Are you, are you, are you going to prohibit throwing colors? What was that mean, Dave? Are you, are you going to prohibit bikers coming in showing colors? Right. Are you going to have a curfew in place so that um, if the events are loud, that they stop at a reasonable hour? Will whatever is going there be consistent with what is also a residential neighborhood? Will the structures be in harmony with the residential neighborhood. Well, hang on, we can Are they going to use baffles to help deaden the noise? This is nothing that Back of the Dragon can do, but how is the town going to handle the additional congestion and the speeding? You already have a problem there, as everyone knows. All of these issues can be addressed, regardless of the zoning, by carefully drafted restrictions in the deed. There's, there's no reason why there can't be orderly development, but still not just have it wide open so that anything goes. And I don't think any of those points were considered earlier, were they? Were they, were, were they included as, as part of what could be determined on the contract? Right. I think they're all very valid points, David, as you and I talked earlier in the week. I think they're all very valid points. You know, every business we have on Main Street that serves food for alcohol. Um, we have an ordinance in our code book about discharging firearm in town. Yes, it's illegal, isn't it? Yes. But does that prohibit it? Doesn't prohibit it of discharging it anywhere. I guess it's illegal to discharge it anywhere if that answers your question. But is it safer not to have it at all? I don't know about that. It's Political view, I guess, but I. No, I mean having them on site for alcohol. Oh, oh, oh. I think it's something we need to look at. Maybe all the restaurants need to look at, not just what might happen there. You know, Virginia is an open carry state. Right. But it also is provided in the code that businesses and establishments can prohibit firearms on the premises. Sure. So. I, I think what you're saying, and correct me if I'm wrong, if he if he builds a structure there, or if Back of the Dragon builds a structure there that has alcohol, you would highly recommend that they do some kind of firearms. Well, they already have a structure. What about the area of the little field what they put there? I'm, I'm asking, is that what you're referring to? If he builds a bar or something there? Well, he is. I mean, that's, that's already the plan. I haven't seen it. I mean, I mean the building is there. Yeah. Uh, I'm talking about the current building. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know. The state of Virginia does not prohibit anybody from going into a bar with a firearm. They just Unless can't the consume business, alcohol. But the business can prohibit it. Yeah, the business can do any of it. But the state of Virginia uh, doesn't prohibit you from going in a place that serves food and alcohol. That's right. 
and that's the reason it's important to perhaps make sure the business prohibits it. But as long as you don't consume, it's not against the law to do that. Again, I think I think David's got a very valid point there, and, and maybe all the businesses need to look at it equal. Totally up to yeah. And bikers and colors, yeah, we we we've, we've been concerned about that with a lot of events, and and, and David, uh, that's a you know that could happen. You know, the back of the dragon uh, is the town of Thousand. Sure, but you just say you don't show colors. Right. You come on. Just right. So who do you say that to? Though? I mean, who, why are you bringing it up in this thing? I mean, what because, about that? Because you have no control over what the business itself does as this contract is written. Right. But the deed itself can contain restrictions that say, yes, okay, we will sell you this subject to these restrictions. You can't allow bikers to show colors. You can't allow open containers in your parking lots. You can't allow firearms on your premises. You can't have loud events after nine o'clock. You can do all of that in the deep. Right. They get a whole lot more advanced than I am with that with your language. I'm not an attorney by any means, but I think that that's up to an individual business. Each business here, each business on Main Street can make that decision. Well, well, that doesn't the safety mean. Of, the, of the town, you, you have an opportunity to control what happens on the edge of a residential neighborhood. Sure. I'm just asking why, or well, what's the downside? In, we'll take a look at it. I, I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm not educated enough in that area to challenge that, but I think we need to look at it. But I, we'll, we, we will. We absolutely will. And was the property appraised before it was sold or before no. it was just the tax steps back. Do you know how much they paid for the where the building sits? Oh, hundred thousand dollars. And you're selling six acres plus for less than fifty thousand an acre. Uh and price at two acres. Is that good stewardship? I'm sorry. Is that good stewardship? It appraised at two eighty. No, that's the tax assessment. There was no appraisal done, as right. I understand. Well, I'm I think it's I think it's well beyond good stewardship if we can get the kids the two new ball fields out of it. Matter of fact, if we gave it to them for two new ball fields for the kids, I think it's a win-win for our community. Yes, but we get a development. Do a new ball field. I'm sorry. The buyer doesn't have to do a new ball field. If the buyer does not participate, David, it's not going to happen. I or it's just not going to happen, so can, it may not happen. It just all may be redundant. Can you show me where it says that? Absolutely can. Show you the contract. If it's not raised prior to closing, absolutely can show it you. It doesn't say that. Okay. Well, I can tell you that if it don't happen, it won't get signed. And maybe we need to modify the contract. Maybe. Um, reasonable hours. So far, every one of our businesses in town have made wise decisions and decisions that are in the best interest of their area, whether it's North Tazel, whether it's Main Street, and there's, there's residential areas that cover Dial Rock and the store Finn Castle out through there. So we would like to think that, you know, if that gets to a point where it's out of hand, I think we need to address that. Why not address it before it happens? We can. What would you suggest? I mean, tell them 12 o'clock or... I mean, I don't know what's going down there. First of all, I have no idea. So, it, if they do, though... I'm sitting on my front porch and listen. Listen to the baseball, to me? Baseball's great. Come listen to the motorcycles. Oh, oh yeah, I get it. What if there's an outdoor concert? Right. Which is one of the rumors that we have heard. I've heard amphitheater too. Absolutely. And we've heard a concert venue. Right. For that, Mike and I live right next door to this property. Right. And anybody in this room that knows us knows that we have always been supportive of Little League Baseball. We have always been supportive of every youth program in this town. And we're supportive of Back of the Dragon too. You can ask Clary Davidson. Oh, I'm tell you. I, 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 I don't 
don't know how I feel about this one way or the other. My husband's not here because he's at the Board of Supervisors meeting because this was scheduled on the same day as the monthly Board of Supervisors meeting or he would have been here. Our concern is that we are a residential area. And Todd, I think you are remarkable for saying the heat is all on you. I think your town council ought to be ashamed of letting you say that. Because we personally know every member of the town council and not one person has been to us to talk to us about how this is going to affect our home, our property, the other 19 homes or whatever that are in that residential area. You know, we keep talking about how good it's going to be for Little League Baseball and I think that is absolutely fantastic. Years ago, Mike and I signed, co-signed a loan for Little League Baseball to update that field, as did five other couples many years ago. So we know what's been going on at that Little League field all these years. But we're concerned that no one had the courtesy to come to us and say, look, this is what we're looking at. And we want to talk to you about how it's going to affect the residents I, I agree. I, I think it's you know, and then right. when I'm told well, we've, we're, we've sold the property, and this is what a council member said, we've already sold it, and we don't know what they're going to put there. And Well, my question is, did you have no concern whatsoever for the residents that you would not know what was going to go in there? Our water line, as do four other homes there, comes from the Little League field. Well, that's a concern of ours, and I had to ask how that affects us. I'm not even sure if town council members know that there are five, at least five homes in that area whose water line comes across the Little League field. You know, we have a row of pine trees there that belong to us that we almost lost the last time the town worked on the Little League field. In fact, our water line got broken then when they were digging up to put that block wall in. And no consideration whatsoever <coughs> for the neighbors. And that's what upsets me is I am 100% for Little League Baseball, I'm 100% for Back of the Dragon, as is my husband. But I think the residents of that area have been very poorly treated. Okay, and again, I, I apologize and I'll go back. I, I'll admit that that my lack of communication at fault there. So, and there I. Are how many people on town council? I understand and that, but I've been. Every one of them knows us personally. I understand. Well, I've been blessed over the last seven years here to have a council that's been supportive and watching the town grow, and they followed my lead, and I'm thankful for that. So I'll take responsibility for that. But and they're all adults too. I they're all big people. Your water line will be moved. Thank you. And I, you know, I we're not going to charge that question. Right. I had to ask that question. How does this affect yeah. their water line? And well, at least four other families. There's also a sewer main there in that in that block. So there's a lot of utilities, but I'll assure you that we'll always provide water for you. And and does uh, the back of the dragon know this water line exists? Does it know about our row of pine trees? Yeah. I, 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 I don't know. No. See, why don't they know? Well, they I mean, haven't. Like I said, we we just entered. We just had the contract drafted. We have not sold the property. I want to go back. I don't know who told you that, but we have not sold the property. The property still belongs to the town of Tazewell. The IDA does not own the property. The town of Tazewell still owns the property. But they have voted to sell it to the back of the draft. They have. When did the back of the dragon first approach the town about this? I guess Jay shot when he first came. Actually, it was before Jay. Larry brought it up probably, I'm going to say, seven, eight months ago. Just brought it up. No decisions. In the last month and a half, serious conversations took place with Jay shot. Why was the um, vote taken as quickly as it was? Well, we were asked to make a move on it so they could expand, and maybe we made a decision to acknowledge that move. Um, 
in a bad method, but maybe we should have waited to October or December to do that so we could communicate. And, and again, uh, Ms. Himes, I'm, I'm telling you as clearly as I can, I apologize for that. And, and I've taken full responsibility for that lack of communication. And it's right here. Um, because I could have said, no, let's, let's pull back and wait to October or November. So I'll take that hit for that. So the council's been very the supportive. The council but, ought to be ashamed of themselves if they let you take that hit. I did. I appreciate, I appreciate that. So we'll, we'll agree to disagree on that area. But I respect that. Thank you. Well, my husband has talked to Jay Shaw. Jay Shaw knew nothing about the water line. He knew nothing about our pine trees. He knew nothing about the residents wanting answers to questions. Sure. Yeah, you know, I think that's pretty sad. His objective was a business opportunity, and th those other communications uh, were up to the town to address, and it's a movement target, and we continue to do that. Well, we also understand that the vote was taken because he was putting pressure on the council to vote. Well, he had asked. He very aggressively asked for that to take place. As a matter of fact, he wanted it to be done in September. He absolutely did. Well, I think that's sad, too, that our council is yielding to pressure from someone and not looking at their constituents. I understand. <coughs> I, I don't, okay, I understand. And again, I don't, I don't have a feeling one way or the other because I heard so many rumors before I came to this meeting that I didn't have any clue what was going on or, or who was doing uh -huh. water. I know there's been a ton of them out there. I went to work for Back of the Dragon two weeks ago. I didn't know it. I'm still waiting on to pay me. Um, May I ask a question? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Contract? Two questions. One, has the contract been delivered to uh, the buyer? Yes, he has seen it. He got it. What happens if they sign it? If the town doesn't sign it, it's kind no, of just sits on the desk. Has the town already approved it? They voted to approve it, yes. Right. So what happens if the buyer signs it? Can the town say, well, we're not signing it even though? Why, sure. It, it hasn't been signed yet. Absolutely. It has to be voted on by the IDA. Voted. I'm sorry. It has to be voted on by the IDA. Well, the town's got to close on it, too. Can I address that? I'm a member of the IDA board. <coughs> and I this is the first public forum I've attended because it's the first one I've known about. Mm -hmm. So as of today, as I sit here, I'm not signing anything. We don't have enough answers to it. Todd knows this. We discussed it last week. Um, I think we all need to take a deep breath, take a step back, take a look at this thing. I think we've rushed into it. We need to be proactive instead of reactive. Amen. And I've said this, and this is something we talked about last week. Everybody likes something shiny and new, including me. And believe, believe me, you know, the kids deserve a brand new ball field. Mm -hmm. Or at the very least, to make the improvements to the existing field. I'm a native of Castle, born and raised here, lived here for 65 years. But I think if, at the very least, if we're going to move the ball field and we're going to sell it, we need to have a tentative <coughs> plan, not only from the back of the dragon in terms of what they plan to put there, but where we're going to put the Little League field, how much it's going to cost, how we're going to pay for it, and what sort of a timeline. I don't, because that's where our children come in. If we delay this thing two years in getting it built, our children are going to suffer. I don't care how much you talk about this is for the kids, we're all for the kids. Two years, it's too much. And if the back of the dragon is gonna have that much input into where, and I don't know, because this first public forum and we haven't met yet, IEPA board meets on Thursday. Personally, I feel like we're being thrown under the bus, if you want to know the truth. Because we're the ones that have to decide whether we sell the field or not. But I have a lot of questions. As you know, sure. 
Where are the little, new Little League fields going to be located? I've already heard four locations. I've heard like seven in the contract. There has not been the outside of town. It seems to me, I'm, 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 there's no plan. That's exactly right. There's no plan for what's going in on the Little League field. There's no plan for where the new Little League fields are going. I, I'm a person who works off plans and timelines. And I, I just can't imagine that anybody would vote out of plan. You know, I think every, whatever one of you is saying is very accurate, so you can almost look at it as everybody's coming in at the beginning. But you're exactly right. There, we haven't selected a spot yet, so until you select a spot, we don't know the cost of it, um, the geotechnical. So I mean, it's expensive, so we don't we don't know. We have we have no, we don't have those answers yet. And what are we doing with the contract? Yeah. We have a, we have a contract. If you read the contract, I read the contract. And it, it specifically says that the funds will be raised. They feed up. It, the funds will be raised up front. And the odds of that happening, I'm on the same page y'all are. I'm I'm on the same page y'all are. But I can tell you this as managing, and this has nothing to do with my bosses or my planning commission or our IDA. But this town, if you don't take a chance on something, somewhere, you can keep watching your economy and you can keep watching your, your numbers stagger. All the town council is doing is trying to give the community something to grow. That's all they're trying to do. And they did it with a contract up front. And they're trying to protect all the businesses that have invested on Main Street for some more economy in the area. That's their focus. We've got, we feel like we have. David's brought a lot of points up that we need to go back and look at. But we feel like we've put points in there to show the community that we're going to go into this thing with accuracy. So it says that he will present those drawings before. It says that the funds need to be there before. You know, we're not going to turn over the little league fields to the unknown. That's not what this governed body has ever been about. When Don was mayor and was approving back of the dragon stuff, he was just as aggressive as Mayor Hoops is today. He's always supported the dragon. He's put money toward the dragon for years. We're going to still continue to support the dragon and our little people. But we're also, David, I totally agree with you. We need to look. If, if it becomes an amphitheater, what are the hours going to be? And we need to do that. If they present drawings that show an amphitheater, we need to do that. I don't know what it's going to be. They've told me parking lots. Just additional parking. I don't know. Oh, I have no idea. Very expensive parking lot. It is a very expensive parking lot. I totally agree. Yes, I, I want to say I'm on IDA board too. And you know, I got a copy of the contract and I read it and I thought, well, I can't support this the way it's written here. And then a week or so later, I read in the Queens Valley, town council sales. Literally, feel I thought, wow. Yeah, you know, not this, this is very in something that I have well, no. It's agreed to sell. Yeah. So, you know, that was. Uh, and, and I can't support it at the current form it's in to a whole lot of questions are answered, a whole lot of things right. are in place, because that's just like signing something out there. But no, I just can't do it. I would think Lily people want to know where their new field's going to be. Exactly. When are they going to be open? I mean, you know, if the town's been looking at this with the back of the Dragon organization for seven or eight months, where's the plan? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm saying, Larry, David, you brought it up to me seven, eight months ago. It was, it was taken off the table. Matter of fact, it was never a proposal. It was only seriously brought into the picture when Jay Shot came on about a month and a half ago. So, uh, you know, it, it has happened, you know, relatively, relatively quick. When Larry brought it up, was yes. it was it a problem with the parking? When Larry brought when up... When Larry the, Davidson came to you about potentially buying the Little League field, was the problem or his reason the parking? 
I think it was just expansion. I don't know, it could have been, I don't recall, but that could have been just expansion. It could have been bought too, I don't know. Is there a problem with serving alcohol next to the Lily baseball yes. field? Because I was, I, I, Mike and I have even had people coming to our house asking us what's going on. Like we have some magic answers. Yeah. And I mean, well, we're saying, we don't know anything more than you know. I can tell you when it comes to the, the town code book, we, that's an ABC jurisdiction. So, yeah. uh, can I can say like here. He can, I mean, that's an ABC issue. Yes. Okay. I'm, a little bit of research. I don't mean jump. I hope I'm getting there. I hope I haven't left any of it at one. And I'm not real versed in all that stuff, but it has conditions under which the board may refuse to grant an alcohol license. And this is in section four, that one that's two two two. Section two. Section subchapter C is so located in respect to any church, synagogue, hospital, private or public school or institution of higher learning, public or private playground, or any other similar recreational facility, or any state, local, or federal government operated facility that the operation of such place under such license will adversely affect or interfere with the normal or orderly conduct of affairs of such facilities or institutions. Well, you just shut down half the time. Everybody will tell you shut down. No, 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 no. They've already, you, they, have they applied for a license? I heard that they yes. just applied on the yes. yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, you have an option of going toward the board or writing a letter against that. Well, who would do that? Everybody no. Everybody We're trying to call it a center capital. Well, I know, but that's within confines of the church. Oh, well, not church or a church. Hey, Larry, you going to sit there and not comment on that? You're right beside the church, David. You're right beside the church. That was on the other I didn't start the church. That, that, right, there, <laughs> that, that right there. That right there. I'm just saying what the code says. Well, okay. I'm just saying that's up to ABC. Well, I know. I know. Well, it's no different than when you were mayor here. Well, I know. Not right to say nothing. Okay. 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 We will surprise you to learn that they applied two days after the meeting on the I heard, I did hear that, yeah. Yeah. We did hear that. On the 12th, I believe. Jimmy Jobs will come to me with the vaccine. You know, I don't know. I don't even know what they're bringing in. As I stated, I don't know. They don't have any idea. I don't know. Hey, if they bring the one, they can bring it in. If they bring one, it's one more than we have now. I don't know, but I don't know. I mean, it's... Uh, if they bring six, it's six more than we have now. You know, what I'm hearing, though, and, and by the way, thank you for the challenge. I mean, thank you for being part of it. Thank you for caring. But what I'm hearing is the big issue is we just need to protect the areas around the residential area. That's your, and that's you what I'm getting. To your I, I understand I that. These people on town council is I understand. You need uh, to be talking to your people. I understand. Uh, yes, thank you. Y'all don't probably don't know me, but, but I've owned and operated two businesses myself. And I have never spent a dollar on a piece of property and didn't know what I planned to put on that property. Understand. I mean, I just found that as ludicrous. Right, I get it. That code book right there. Yeah, but what I'm saying, book. you can't back the dragon's gonna pay three hundred thousand dollars for a piece of property and they don't know yet what they're gonna do with it. Ah. That's what I think, okay, I understand that, but they have a zoning code they have to adhere to. So, if you want to buy a piece of property, Fifi, we don't make you tell us what you're going to do with it unless, unless you, when you get ready to deal, we do if it's a B district. But, but what you're saying is they haven't even said so. We don't know what we're going to do with it, we're just going to purchase it, but we don't I, know what we're going to do with exactly it. That's exactly right. I don't and have I, a clue. I, I don't know. I, don't. I can't imagine a business person, and these people are supposed to be business people, right? Not having, not having some sort of. Right. I understand. Just a question on the yes. location. Sure. The contract currently provides that it can be as far away as seven mile radius. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, any possibility of getting that changed? But I don't like it at all. If it's, oh. if it's. Seven miles west, Bluefield gets the. Advantage. That's correct. That's correct. Yeah, so right. I totally, I totally agree, agree with you on that. I can tell you what our 
banking was. We wanted Little League to have field. So I'm on the agenda for October 14th uh, school board agenda right now. And I'm taking to a proposal. All right, I'm also negotiating today, had I made, it, made an unofficial offer on the CNX next property. Thank you, Mr. Altas, by the way. <laughs> so, you know, we're looking at property in town. I will fight to keep it in town. But if we can't find it because of cost or we can't find it for geotechnical reasons, we still want to have new fields, new modern fields somewhere. That was the thing. So, you know, there was numbers kicked out as far as 10 miles. But it was because Cancel was saying, hey, let's get them fields, and the kids don't care if they go to Jenkins Jones. When they get out the car, they're spinning the ball on their finger or they're throwing the baseball. That was their thinking. They just wanted it. So I do totally agree with it. It needs to be in town if at all possible. And what are the plans for the $300,000 purchase price? Uh, we would put it back into the investment per the day. If I understand it, I'm not an attorney, but it says it has to be put back in. So we would take the $300,000 and add it to the pile of whatever's raised. Tom, what's the status of the recreation access grant? The recreation access grant was totally approved. It was approved by VDOT, plus we got $100,000 of 50-50 net. So if this transaction takes place, we cannot and no need to do it, but we will we'll not implement that. But why don't you explain what that is? Yeah, the, the, the entrance to the Little League, as everybody knows, is skewed really bad. So if you're traveling east down to try to get in, you got to pull way over to the lane. So what we started doing three years ago, thanks to Andy Cecil and working with VDOT, was we applied for a recreational access grant that would actually straighten up those skews on both ends. So it, it actually puts a, a passing lane in the back. Another big reason for it is because I got a water line running up that sidewalk and the sidewalk falling in and your roads caving in. So that was a way to address it, the road by utilizing recreational access grants to be out. So how much additional parking would that have given the little league? I don't think it would have given them any more parking, but it would have given them passing ability. Right. You but could have passed back here, you could have accessed it easier, more safer, safer manner. But that's work you would do regardless if you were putting anything there. Uh, no, we, it's only for no, not, not the town, but I'm saying the grant is only for the town. Right? Yes, for that recreation. So for recreation. Yeah. But somebody's going to, you the property but, problem is still going to be there regardless of who owns it. Oh, yes. They'll still, because we're not going to put tax dollars in. We're not going to match the $100,000. We're not going to match it if it's private. Not if it's not. I still need to retain that water line, though. But. Yeah. And Mr. Yes. Tom, is it possible that that grant, recreational access grant, can be shifted to the nine acres that we own out there? We, we've questioned that, and what VDOT is telling us is to just forego it. And I've got two months, by the way, to figure that out. So, what VDOT is saying, just forego the grant, return it, give it back, and then reapply wherever we want to. So, no, I, I'd like to be able to say, okay. Give us that two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Let's go somewhere else and spend it. But we have to just reapply. Do we know how long it's going to take? I'm sorry. I apologize. I'm not on Facebook. I very rarely do internet. Is there a possibility that the residents of that area get a written copy of the contract? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely can. In print. Absolutely. We'll handle everything. Not on the internet. I don't know. Thank I'll you. give it to you before you leave. Thank you. Yeah. I want one too. Absolutely. Give them all. Give them all. Yes. Yeah. See, right. my main problem is if there's going to be a concert on down the road, right. how long is it going to last? Right. I mean, I'll be sitting there watching TV. Will I be able to hear the TV? Right. Well, I can assure you if it was in front of my house, I'd want to shut down by 8.30. 
<laughs> so um, I, I understand that. And when that's presented, if that's presented to the town, it will be addressed. If we will look at that, we will take that into consideration. But once again, I hate to be redundant. We don't. I don't have a clue what's going there. Do we know how long it's going to take to get our alternate site, Lincolnshire, in this case, ready to play ball? Well, what we're doing is, I'm, David, I'm waiting on them to... I've not heard from Jay on this topic since the night the cancel vote on this topic. Um, he's talked about some other issues on you know, the house on Mary and he just purchased and some other yeah, things. Did you buy the property? Yes, yes, yes. yes. I'm also I'm also hearing that he's working with Monty Rice on the apartments across the road from the field too. We've also heard he wants to buy the school board building. Yeah, I heard that too. Mm -hmm. So so back to the fields. How how long is it gonna take to fix the field building? Um you know, when, whenever they say they wanna move on it, all those dates, David, and are gonna to have to be renegotiated with Brendan the board and re-looked at and as i stated i i don't know a whole lot of, whole lot about baseball but we're going to work diligently with you guys to be sure got somewhere to play and as david pointed out there may be some questions in the contract that leave that in jeopardy and i'm gonna work with david and brad pie to address them. i mean i'm telling you we're not going to I, I, I think planning is, is really what we're at from, from a league perspective. We just want to make sure, I mean, if they apply pressure and they force right. you to make a decision again and we don't have time to right. upgrade Lincolnshire, right. so, well, where are we going? Okay, say, say the contract is written today, okay, and you sign it. It says in there by uh, one segment in there by March the uh, 20th or March the 1st, 2020, okay? You know good and well that's from November to you're not going to do anything on the fields, okay? If you move out to Lincolnshire, also, are they going to tar down, start tar down the, the little league itself? Then you don't have a batting cage, okay? So that's a, that's a problem you got to think about. Well, I have a list of the things that would need to be done at Lincolnshire, and that's a minimum for little league requirements. That's good. Okay. And I have that with me. And that's going to cost some money. And who's going to fund that? Odds are your town council is going to contribute that to a little bit. Yeah, well, that's that's it. Just that I can share. Yeah, that's and just it. Right, right, right. Okay, say that this does not happen. Say back to the dragon does not purchase. Okay. What is going to be the protection for these residents, our children? Yes. With them growing back to the dragon within their square footage of their property. And if they buy the Sunnyside Apartments, and right. and if we are still there, my concern is safety for the kids. Sure. <clears throat> um, um, it, you know, there's been a small tiff there between the properties. Um, and I don't like. That. I don't like I'm that just, I, I don't feel. I'm not being stereotypical either. I'm not labeling anybody with a motorcycle. Right. Um, but you mix two wheels and alcohol, and you know what you have. Hey, hey, that's uh, just, I mean, that's just what it is, and with kids. Right, right. I think, if I'm hearing you right, you're, you're, you're talking specifically about what they already have. Right. How's it going to and be? And if they grow and we don't sell, and we're still there. Right. You know, how are we going to be protected? The businesses across the street, you know, they come in and they already think that's parking for them. Right, right. He's not stopping them to park at the Cumberland Mountain, nor our Little Lake Field. He's not stopping them. However, he stopped us parade day from even stepping, stepping on his lawn. He stood there and made sure nobody stepped on that lawn. So, but he's not stopping. So he's already, you know, we just don't want to cross paths. And like you said, it's hard to get in and out of that place. I don't, I, I'm not, other than what I hear, and I don't like it. And I can assure you that I've heard what was said to an individual on parade day that he was going to call the police and sue the town. Oh. <laughs> That'd be good. So, to answer your question, Brenda, um, if I hear you right, we're going to do everything we can 
to have control of development. Uh, we're going to do everything we can to implement zoning. We're going to do everything we can to take care of the children. And we're going to do everything we can to grow the town uh, and grow the economic background of this town so these businesses and citizens and our kids can maybe have a shot at sanitizing. Um, I don't know if that ain't really answers your question or not. I, I, can, I can tell you that the best interest of the town is in your town council's heart and your IDA and your planning commission. Not doing anything to hurt anybody. Their whole objective, uh, you know, when they put on the local incentives and you know, when they were the local taxes and just the thing that has all been not because we had a whole lot of money, but it was to grow Tazewell so that that slide that we're in today stops. It's got to stop. And, you know, I've had a lot of people, there's been several people tell me that there's got to be some catastrophes in town for the town to grow. I mean, have you ever heard that? Y'all heard it? Y'all? But that's, that's horrible to think of. But sometime or another is managed. I'm telling you, I've been doing it for 23 years. If we don't go to bat and take a chance, you know, you can turn around and look one day and nothing. There don't be nothing there. So, you know, we lost a hotel, not once, twice. The bowling alley. And somebody was on Facebook, you know, commenting we didn't have a really good... I'm going to tell you, I'm going to swing at every opportunity. I'm going to swing for that. For the fence, everything comes across. I'm going to swing at it. And some, I've, been on, I've been going from third to home and called out more than one to the stain for a little bit, but I don't regret it. All right, I have a question. You, you speak about the one back. Okay. Right. Who says that in February, they decide they want to go through with this. Right. Now we haven't made any ground on Lincolnshire for right. like two days until February. February is too late to get Lincolnshire ready. Let's right. go to bat now. Let's right. get Lincolnshire ready. And then let's start working on totally. This. If I thought that they were going to move forward, we would do that. But again, let's take your scenario. Let's say they come in February. They want to sign in February. I'm gonna go to I'm gonna go to Brenda and say, Brenda, help me help me out here. Educate me on what you need. And then I'm gonna go back to them and say, yeah, it ain't gonna happen till till April or March. It ain't gonna happen. You know, I don't have any choice but to do that. You know, we're going we're gonna work with with them to, to create some economy, but we are going to take care of little league baseball. So um, I'm procrastinating right now. He's procrastinating right now. We're all hovering, waiting on a report to come back. But I'm sorry. If you come back, if you come today and you want it signed, or and it's not feasible for construction and, and little league, it's not going to happen. But why not go ahead and do? I agree with you all. Why not go well, ahead and fix the Lincoln Sharp parts, which are not being used? Is that correct? Well, they had a whole summer of softball. They, yeah, they had a real big summer. So, yeah. but you, so we're still willing to give that up for for a little leg in order to have somewhere to play at. We don't See, have, this is what I'm talking about, no plan. And you've right. heard it from several others. We don't have to give softball. Okay. We don't you don't have to give your beer league softball. You don't have to give your co-ed league softball. We can fix the fields out there to adequately support Tasman Little League and the town's beer league softball. Oh, that's right. Okay. You can oh, adequately, wow. adequately fix it. There's, oh, what is it, 300 foot fences? I thought felt there's 300 yeah. foot fences. Little league portable fences. Portable fences. Yeah. yeah, little league field fences are 220. We get portable <laughs> fences, bring them in. I love it. I love it. I think but, it's great. But it's if we go ahead and we do this now, Okay, and the plan falls all to pieces. You can still have it. We have, but we have four fields now. We have four now. fields. Yeah. Yeah. We have yeah. four fields. Yeah. Yeah. And now we host yeah. tournaments. Yeah. 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 You want to bring tourism to Tazewell. You host tournaments, you bring kids yeah. to Tazewell. Uh -huh. You got to have more yeah. fields. Exactly. You got to have Last year, we had yeah. Virginia State tournament. Now and we there were 13 districts here, and not a single person from the town showed up on the hill to greet anyone from everywhere in the state of Virginia. Mm -hmm. And the winners went to the World Series. Not a soul. We spent a lot of time and effort and days from 7 o'clock in the morning till midnight. 
We put these people in hotels from here to Princeton, Whiffle. They can stay in Burke's Garden. Mm -hmm. Stay in Airbus. In his homes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. We, but they, there again, the nobody, media. there's several council members that I've spoken with personally. They didn't even know we had to say that. I was supposed to let our district know about the three state tournaments we are to have this year. We already have the state tournament, and that's in July. The other three are in June. Can the town handle it? If we're at Lincolnshire, yeah. the pool is open, yeah. Aqua Park's open, right. the lake is open, are we going to have enough parking? Yeah. What are we going to do about concessions? Well, I think that's a Lighting. That's a so the next three tournaments that we're supposed to have. I and you know how much money there. that is? If, if that's you, a lot of money. If we can convert that field to where a little league can play, let's get it done. There, there's no doubt about it. that. We can. That's positive thinking. Right? I love that thinking right there. So with, with, without the commitment to go ahead and do that, we're quickly approaching a go no go date where even if they want to, we can't because we won't have time to do it. So I think we let's move forward. Let's get it done. And then if it falls through, we've got four fields. You still benefited Little League Baseball. Yeah. And supposedly that's what this is all about. The state tournament's already using those fields at Lincolnshire. They're listed as one of our practice fields. Okay. Graham lets us use their fields as, as practice fields, the rec park. So they are be even being utilized before they're even fixed, just as a practice field. And we're talking about junior boys and senior boys that were here last year, so. Time, I wanna add something to what they're saying. The, uh, we go to a lot of fields, and some of those fields, most of you in this room know that girls softball is played on a skin field, which means there's no, no grass in the fields, just, just dirt. But boys baseball, are, they're also starting to adjust to that. So we go to a lot of fields and they put a plug in the ground for little league distance for, for the bases. They put another one at 80 feet for the next older group and then another one in the ground at 90 feet. So depending on what age group you have coming, just pull the plug out, drop the bases in, you're ready to go. Okay. In, now, in, in 30 minutes time, you can be ready. For girls, girls pitchers don't use a mound, so you just leave that out. But when you bring the boys in, you just bring in a portable mound. So within 30 minutes, you can have everything we're talking about ready if we are proactive, as somebody said before. I like what you said, Phoebe. If we go ahead and do these things, these fields could be utilized now. I don't, I don't know. Now, I heard somebody say soccer. Does that affect soccer in any way? No. I'm just asking. I don't know. No, that's that's been, been, we've been. That's a, that's a question for Ben. Um, I don't know that. That's a good question. Okay. Yeah. How could it? All you're doing is putting a rubber. No, no, no. What they're saying is. They played all the they, soccer rec league. Yeah. Are they just they have spring league? Yeah. Spring and fall. Yeah. Well, no, but if you've got a portable fence, you just take the I know. I'm talking about soccer. There is soccer that's utilized. You move the fence. Yeah. Right. Yeah. There's like 12 teams out there yeah. practicing. Oh, I see what you're saying. On yeah. one yeah. particular yeah. evening, yeah. and then there was a baseball team out there practicing yeah. as well. It was a nightmare. Yeah. So we can control the soccer schedule. Yeah. 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 We can do that. We can control Soccer's part of the Tassel Rec Department, so we can control that schedule working with baseball to work out something that works for both sides because all it's going to be is moving in fields, you know, to open up the outside. I think it's a great idea. I appreciate you bringing that up. I, mean, yes. I think it's a great idea. Definitely. Um, let's go back to the concerns that our IDA members may have. Um, if you'll ask any questions that you've got, I'll do my best to try to answer them, CC. And, uh, any of my IDA then, no, but uh, one of the kind of concerns I have is having a place for the kids to play right. in the meantime, ahead of time, before all of this happens. And it right. sounds like the conversation that's talking here is going to remedy some of that and right. give the opportunity. If that falls through, you got four fields with more opportunities of bringing more people in. So, you know. I think within our meeting we can talk about some okay. other things, but that was one of my true concerns. So that's there. one concern alleviated. Did you have hey, what other concerns? And, and then the residents in the area down there. Right. I think I and think when the when the proposal is brought forward, whatever it may be, there's a lot of people that, that buy land in town. As a matter of fact, there was a guy that just brought a bunch of property and I've talked to him over on over on uh uh oh, have we out here three feet right below y'all on Fairgrounds Road and I don't know what he's going to do with it but by law I don't have to know 
You can buy property when you want to buy property, how you want to buy it with your money. So again, we have oh, zoning sure. regulations sure. that sure. they have to follow on there. So. Uh, what other did you have any other concerns? Course, another concern, alcohol. Now I'm not saying I'm not against that part. I drunk a lot in my time. <laughs> I'll say a lot. So, but you know, just when you mix motorcycles, alcohol, and all the things that comes with that, and firearms, you know, those right. kind of things be addressed. I do think it goes with four wheel vehicles also. Right. Oh, it, 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 it does. Okay. I, it, any type of vehicle. I don't care what. You know, our, our our motorcycle traffic that we've got. I see them at every restaurant on Main Street. Mm -hmm. All right, it, well, it's I, not just it's not they just. They say the too. Yeah. yeah. So we, we love our we love our motorcycles. We love our vehicles. We love our tourism. We love the traffic in spring. I, know. Yeah. I don't know how to answer that question. We have state laws, you know, when it comes to alcohol that our local police department enforces. <laughs> And I understand that, and I know that's something that you can't control there, but just be conscious of that. Right. And, you know, you can regulate how people go out and do the max student sure. I mean, because I've been on the sale, and I still yeah. understand that. I think, just, and you correct me if I'm wrong, just to clarify what the back of the dragon is wanting to do with those little leg fields is lawfully. Outside of the transpire, outside of the transaction of property, okay, keep this in mind. As long as it falls under the zoning, they're good. Um, when it comes to when it comes to activities that are noise, really like an amphitheater, I think we do need to step in. I think we do need to control that, and, and we will do that. We will do that. And as David says, maybe that needs to be clarified if an amphitheater. And I don't know if it needs to be in, in a purchase contract. When, I don't know. So we'll look at it with brains. So. That, that's also the kind of environment that you, you talked about going to have a meal and having a beer. I don't think that's really the concern. Right. The concern is you go and belly up for 10 hours. Yeah, and sure. then you're, hey, what's up? And you, you, know, you, um, made the, you made the observation earlier that you would just have to put a great deal of stock on the business owner of the yeah. maintaining control. And then we just heard um, some stories about how he's not showing himself to be a very good neighbor already. Right, right. So why yeah. would you think he would? Oh, I'm not here to judge him. I'm, I'm not here to cast I'm not that. judging him either. I'm just making I, I an observation. I'm just saying that if he deals that facility, um, you know, we've got laws to control that. His relationship with individuals or with organizations, I don't like what I'm here. Okay? I think the PR leaves a lot to be desired. And I'm just saying, that being the case, why do you think that he would control the alcohol aspect of his business? So I, I did go down and meet with him to see what was uh, planned for the visitor center, where everybody suspects the Hells Angels bar is going. It's, it's not what people are thinking from what I've seen in his plan, and he well, it was Jamie, the lady, invites anybody to come down and look at that hard copy of what they want to put in that visitor center. So it, that's an open invitation because I didn't know either. So I went down. You know, I, I told him the other day, he said, Todd, he said, who wants to call that? We're going to have a bar. And there's no alcohol bar in that facility. But I told him, he said, why would you let me? I'm sorry. If there's no bar, why is it? He's got iPads in there. There's no bar in there, but there's no alcohol bar in there. But he told me, um, he said, why don't you let everybody know that? And, and I told him that, I said, because you have a legal right to change your mind in that zoning. You have a legal right later on down the road with the zoning in ABC to do that. That'd be kind of like, you know, me restricting you from doing something that's illegal to do in a, in a zone that is definitely so, yeah. uh, any other questions? Well, that you have? I did have another question. You know, and, and I, I support the back of the dragon, but you know, in their plan somewhere, whenever they first built there, they had to have some plan of what they were going to do and kind of thing. I would hope. Right. Yeah. They did. They did. Did they, did they, they already know that they needed more space? 
I don't have any. And if so, why did they locate there knowing all the things around there? I mean, I don't, I don't know. I and, and, and that was, you know, just something right. I was wondering about. I don't know. People, people buy property and wish they'd bought more or less. I don't have an answer to that. I, I understand that. If there are other public meetings, could they be on more than just Facebook? Mm -hmm. I don't do Facebook. I don't, I don't if my husband didn't do Facebook, I wouldn't have known about this meeting. And actually, he's he texted it to me at 10 30 one night because i was already in bed asleep so speaking from the little league perspective for the for the residential area around um, you know it, I, i'm i support the back of the dragon as well but if the amphitheater is what he wants to do or the he wants to turn this town into another sturgis so i mean, so be it it's going to bring people in but maybe the, that area is not the area for him. Maybe we need to help him find yeah. another area that is more suitable that will bring right. tourism to the town of Tazewell. I'm fine. If they want to make another Sturgis in Tazewell, Virginia, so be it. Hey, let's do it. Let's bring people here. Just not, just not in, not in the, the heart of our town. I think that speaks to you. You mentioned your aggressiveness. And I, I value that very much. I appreciate your aggressiveness. But we also have to temper that with we are doing something on that six acres right now to combat everything that you said we're fighting. There are 300 plus kids down there that have a sense of value and belief and purpose. And it is disproportionate to the rest of our sports programs. I don't know why it is, but it is. I love basketball. We don't have basketball. I love football. We're playing seven man football in youth now. Yeah. And yet we still continue to send young men and young women to compete at state, if not higher. So the point is that six acres is not normal. It has to be negotiated like it's not normal. Right. It has to be protected yes. like it's not normal. I did some research myself. The Little League alone has more children enrolled than soccer from young all the way up to varsity. Basketball from Little League all the way up. Football. We just, and this, you're just dealing with four year olds to 12 year olds, essentially. That's not even including the junior or senior. This year we had 259 registered players just from four year old to 12 year old. Right, that's amazing. And it, Sherry Bowen will tell you we give them, our single organization is 100% supportive of them. We purchase absolutely everything from them, from uniforms to all stars. We are their biggest customer, essentially during you know the sports season. And so we need to and we need to back you wholeheartedly, and we need to support you, and we we, we will continue to do that. Well, manager, yes, was the council aware that that was a historical place? Yeah, yeah it's beat on football. It's game. actually recognized. I'm 55, and it was they played yeah. football. I guess yeah. some of these guys were. Yeah, I played one. I mean, did they ever think about it? Yeah, that? it's got some history to it. It did, yeah, that, it did. But it, it, you know, any of these business owners that are in here can tell you, Pete, if we stay focused on what is and what was, we'll never have anything. But you're exactly right. It's got some historical. There's some sentimental feelings over that feel like right that. Totally agree. I totally agree. You know, they they used to ride horse and buggy at the road we had to, but we had to move on and. But the, again, those 300 kids, that's not sentimental. That's no, real. That's real. Yeah, that's that's real. real. So this is not a horse and carriage. Yeah. We're, we're talking about we're playing ball. So we're, we're inspiring them. We're trying to give them confidence. And we've got to treat that differently because of that. I'm not trying to be petty, um, but as a mother of a uh, child who is getting ready to age out of Little League, and I didn't have a great answer for her, she's, a, she's like, no one asked me what I thought. I'm going to be displaced for my last season of Little League. How fair is that? And I told her, you know, yes, we're, we want more. I've lived here for 43 years. I will live here, you know, forever. And I hope that she can stay too. I want new for everybody. I'm supportive of things coming through. But she's like, hey, nobody asked me. I don't want to go anywhere. I want to finish on the Little League field. Right. And I don't have an answer for that. I mean, maybe we're going to Lincolnshire, maybe we're not, maybe, maybe yes. whatever. So I agree with you. you know. I agree with what the gentleman right there in the front said. Let's prepare Lincolnshire so you can play there anyway. 
I like that. I like that thing. Did my IDA members, I'm really concerned about my IM. I'm sincerely concerned about my IDA members. There's a whole change in the economy and the future with those IDA members. Who are so your I, IDA members? You got four of them. You got four of them. Four Three of them. And you have four. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. You have four in here. We have Jalisha. You have Jalisha Reed. I mean, um, Jalisha Reed. Yeah. Uh, Joe had a question. Yeah. I was just wondering where the uh, 1.7 million figure came from. Well, what we wanted to show, what we were trying to show Jay was there was a there was a figure of three hundred thousand dollars that was originally proposed. And we wanted to show him in there that this could exceed 1.7 million or more. And that's specifically what it says. So we were trying to show him that you've got to raise or work with us or you can sit down there and not do nothing. But that's got to be raised. That's the value of the construction for two new fields has to be raised before anything's going to happen. And we don't know how much it's going to cost because we don't know where we're going. Mm -hmm. So, I, is, is, were those based on like studies and average? Oh no, no, no! That was just uh, that was just a figure. So, you know, we were just trying to clearly say that you could be in excess of 1.7 million. So there was some small engineering takeoffs done on an average piece of property, but no, who knows? It might be able to be accomplished. In, Seven hundred thousand. He may be able to do it for three, four million. I mean, nobody knows. Nobody knows. Uh, Joe, I, I, want to, I want to speak to that. Uh, share some information. Probably nobody in the room, or not very, very many of you will know. Uh, as far as I know, this began as far as the baseball boosters were involved. I'm the president of baseball boosters, which means nothing more than I speak for them. I don't make any decision on my own at all. I speak for them. But uh, Jay Shot invited me on behalf of the baseball boosters to come to meet with Larry Davidson himself and his CPA. And in that meeting he proposed giving the purchase of the property, giving the town three hundred thousand. Uh, a foundation was supposed to go kick in a hundred thousand according to him. And the agreement would be that the town would then pass that money to the baseball boosters and we could build on our nine acres that we own in front of the middle school. Uh, and I told him that when the meeting started that I, I can't speak for the group, I'll take it back. I said, well, have another meeting and I'll tell you what they say. So we had another meeting. There were a lot more people, uh, Todd and other uh, folks involved in that meeting. And at that meeting, I said, I'll have to respectfully decline your offer. Uh, he wasn't pleased with that. And I said, well, we're building in a rock pile out there. And we started building the field that we're working on now in 1998. And we had pretty much the footprint finished in 98. We got a quarter million dollars in debt right now that we're, we're looking at, just trying to get it finished. So I said, there's no way in the world we can build two baseball fields for $400,000. To which he responded that he had a contractor in Richlands who had said he can build them for about $170,000 each. Mm -hmm. And he said, do you mind if we use your contractor? And I said, no, by all means, bring him up here. Uh, I said, he's pretty good that he can tell me from a distance, not come and look at it, not core, core drill, and not know if it's a cliff or, or soft sand, that he can build it for $170,000, by all means let's do this. So at that point, the offer was for the baseball boosters to build it, and we stepped out of it. Now a, a different approach has been, been taken, and that is bring it to the town. Uh, so I appreciate the town taking the lead on this very much, I wanna say that. Uh, I think there's an opportunity here, if we do it right, that can be a gold mine, it can be a win-win for everybody involved. I think, I like the suggestion, and again, I like the word you use, being proactive. I like the idea of doing something now at Lincolnshire so the kids can benefit from it now instead of us waiting on the back of the dragon to make up their mind. Because what could easily happen here is somebody may have approached the back of the, back of the dragon, they would talk to somebody, and somebody from the Tobacco Commission to come in here one day with a check and sign that contract that you've given them. And then, Mr. Mr. David Altizer, then what do we do? Are we legally committed? Have we bought the farm at that point or, or have we not? I don't know. That's for your legal minds to work out, but uh, all that's possible. Any other questions from anybody? 
I'm going to go back to my ID8 member, sir. <laughs> well, I, I just want to yeah. say, as an ID8 member, I, I do, I, I want to support the economic development of the town. I, I think Route 16 is going to be marketed, whether it's Town of Tazewell, Tazewell County, Smith County, Marion, whoever it is. I want to see a way that we can benefit off of that. And uh, I think this is a very good avenue to do that. Uh, but I, I do think we need to be very cautious and make sure that that contract is, you know, locks up a, a secure deal for Little League and uh, for the residents. And uh, if we have to do that through the noise ordinances or curfews or whatever that is, right. uh, there's other avenues that we can go about protecting the residents. Sure. Uh, I, I do understand that. But um, I, I really, I think that as long as that contract gets sheared up to where these kids have somewhere to go our playing soccer fields get get uh you know approved to where they have a place to play in the meantime um, and we're obligated to do it uh, i think we've got to follow through too many times we've seen stuff not follow through but uh i want to get those tax dollars in here i, I want people right and if too much traffic is a good problem to have I want to remind, and I want to be as transparent as I can, and keep throwing it out there. The town code will specifically designates operations in different zones, and they are they're posted right up there. You can get on the town's website and look at them. Again, I have no idea what they want to do with that property, and that's typical when anybody buys land. So I could go buy a piece of land around here and I do not have to let the town know what I'm gonna do with it until I get ready to do it. So I wanna be as transparent as I can and, and with, with what knowledge I have, he can, you know, that transaction can take place and he's gotta to report to us before the closing or at closing you know what's going to happen there and it's got to be approved no it's, it's got to be uh, well i mean it's got to be but you're missing the point this isn't just black acre out here owned by joe blow this is a piece of property owned by the town of Tasman. this is a piece of property that's on the edge of a residential community right the town has the opportunity to put whatever restrictions it wants to on the sale of this property, regardless of what the zones zoning says. It can say yes, you can you can put a restaurant there, but the deed can also say, well, you can't have outdoor activities after nine, regardless of, of what the zoning does. And I don't know why there continues to be that disconnect. Right. Well, I can assure you, David, that that's not going to happen. I want to be as transparent as I can. I'm not going to stop a business that wants to build a restaurant or a bar in town. Or, you know, we have them in every restaurant. If it's zoned and it fits, I cannot legally stop it. And that's with 23 years in local government. I'll get challenged by another attorney on the other side. No, you're, Been missing, there. you're missing the point. It isn't about enforcing the code or not enforcing the code. This is property owned by the town. The town can put any restriction it wants to. I understand. I understand. Okay. That, that's, that's where we're having to disagree. Right. We're talking apples and, and oranges. I think you're right. In, 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 if, if there's an activity such as a uh, an amphitheater there, I, I totally agree. Um, I'm just saying explore it. I understand. Think, think I agree. through. I agree. Explore the consequences and take what steps can be taken. I agree. Back to the, the, the distinction of how valuable this six acres is. And I'm not talking about appraised value. That's why you can ask them. I'm sorry, this six acres is not normal. This is not, we got more than 2,000 acres in the town that you buy. It, we don't ask any questions. This six acres, we ask questions. Right, right. We have to. Mm -hmm. We sure. have to. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. Yeah. Any other questions? Just for information, just for information. And you look on yourself. Is you, know, you always hear numbers about how many people's coming through or whatever. 
highway department does have uh, traffic counts and it's on the website for the entire state of Virginia for 2018 and they break it down by savings and uh, I won't go into that you just need to look and be astonished yeah. some pretty good numbers. and some pretty bad numbers yeah. just for example Marion is Main Street Marion. It's 14,000 vehicles a day. Main Street Town is about uh, 3,400. Yeah, but it's, you have an interstate that runs through Marion, though, right? Yeah, you have an interstate that runs through Marion. That's just Main right. Street. Okay. So where, where are you going with that? What are you trying to I'm just saying just you need to look. I think you're building our case better that we need to have more here to bring more traffic. You've got people in this room, Don, and just got through saying that they feel the effects already. Well, I know, I know. I'm just saying you look at the traffic from Marion and traffic here and other areas, you know, they're promoting back to the dragon around 16, but there's also uh, back to the dragon for uh, not back to the dragon, but call the dragon going from land to with and you got a segment in Macdowell County. So you're getting other stuff other than from Marion to Tasso. You're getting from West Virginia, you're getting stuff from uh, east or whatever. And that, that's what drives a lot of that stuff. Can we talk just a little bit about the positive economic impact that, that has? I mean, as and this may be no. Uh, really, do you have any statistics like meals tax right. impact or anything like that that you might be able to share? Yeah, those I don't have it, but yeah, those those can be. I can't do that per business, but I can give you numbers and you can see increases. But yeah, there's been increases in all those areas that are really dramatic. Um, matter of fact, just the numbers, and I won't say which restaurants, but over in North Tasman, when we opened up the Aqua Park for the last year. It averaged 450 kids a weekend. A weekend. Well, I can tell you that the numbers at the restaurants that are over there beside that aqua park. Yeah, so tourism is real. Any of you ever have any, any questions, let me know. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity that you gave us. Uh, Absolutely, I appreciate the input. But I'm just hoping that town to town doesn't become one of these worst towns or cities in Virginia. I see on Facebook a while back, Rich Lands was ranked one of the, they hit a worse town in the state of Virginia. Towns were what mentioned, and I, that's something we're looking to be proud of. Oh, yeah, and I'm just hoping that. These bodies don't come in here and bring something in here that we don't want. Right. And it's going to put a bad look on that. I mean, I, that's just my opinion. I, you know, you got bodies, and I know all of the main gang members, but we don't know what's going to be coming in here. These guys come here and be families, carrying AKs and everything. I don't know, but I just don't want our town to turn to be one of the worst towns in the state of Virginia. I don't think anybody, I agree with you. Oh, boy, I totally agree. Matter of fact, we were recently ranked in the top 10 in the Commonwealth of localities to be in. And I can forward that article out. I'm not certain what you've seen. So we're real proud of that. We just need to continue to build on it. Any other questions from anybody? I would like to respectfully ask if my IDA members could stick around for about five minutes. Um, but if you don't have any other questions, thank you very much for coming out. and. Thank you for the challenges and... Uh,